Hi there, this is James Tripp. In this video I want to talk to you about the Tetralemma and specifically about uh, some ways of using this ancient figure. It's from, uh, I believe, from ancient Indian logic. Some people say ancient Greek logic. Uh, a way of using this ancient um, alternative logical figure, if you like, to drive powerful transformative processes. Now, before I talk specifically about the Tetralemma, I just want to say something about reality, how we create and shape our own reality from the inside out. Um, using you, You've probably seen me elsewhere share the hypnotic loop or the reality loop, where we have the four points, beliefs or understandings at the top. Uh, then we go around to what I used to label as imagination, but these days I label as mind flow. So we've got beliefs, imagination, we've got uh, mind flow, we've got um, physiology at the bottom, and then we've got experience. And, and it's a loop, and it drives itself around. I have an expanded model of this now, which includes the role of consciousness within this, and whether consciousness is being sucked into the loop and swept along by the loop, or whether consciousness is separating out and rising above, so you can identify with yourself as the creator of the loop, which is where real power lies if you're into self-transformation. But that's, that's aside from right now. Um, what the hypnotic loop or the reality loop creates for us is a model of how we as human beings create the reality tunnels or the series of specific tight trances through which we experience the world. Okay, and, and I've often talked about us being reality shapers. We don't live in the world as it is, but as it occurs to us. And in any given moment, we are shaping reality in a particular way. We are creating a reality tunnel through which we are experiencing things and engaging with things and responding to things. So these reality tunnels through which we live, the loops that run our lives, so to speak, are hugely significant. Now, when I sit down with clients, I'm very interested in the loops that they're bringing, you see, because most of the time with a lot of the work that I do, people are stuck in problem loops. They're stuck in problem reality tunnels. In certain given contexts, something fires up, which they are now seeing to be a problem for them. And they want to transcend that loop. They want to get outside of the boundaries of that reality tunnel and experience different choices and different responses. And this is my job. This is what I help people do. And it's useful to understand something of how people do this. And this is where the, the uh, hypnotic loop comes in. Now, a lot of the work that I do focuses on beliefs and understandings. Yes, I work with other aspects of the loop as well, but ultimately with the hypnotic loop, the reality loop, we have beliefs and understandings at the top. And there's a reason for that, because they are the foundations through which our um, reality tunnels are structured, so to speak. And that's what needs to change. That's what needs to change. You can temporarily change experiences, you can temporarily change physiology, you can temporarily change all sorts of things, but it's only when the underpinning understanding shift that the whole uh, reality tunnel or reality loop just dissolves away. So when I sit down and I work with clients, I'm listening for their belief structures. I'm listening for their understandings. I'm listening for their key operational concepts. I'm listening for how they are organizing their reality. And what I want to help them do is shift those understandings, those beliefs, those key operational concepts, so as they are able to see the world and experience the world differently. And this isn't an intellectual shift. This is a deep down embodied shift. We're talking about really seeing and perceiving things differently, not just having like a, a different theory of how stuff works. So I'm, I'm, as a hypnotist, as a developmental coach, I'm looking at helping people make these shifts all the time. Now, one of the, there, there are many ways to approach this, but a very, very useful and very, very powerful tool when understood deeply is what's called the tetralemma. And the tetralemma is, um, it comes from the, the roots that are tetra and lemma. And lemma uh, means assumptions or premises, and tetra means four. So four assumptions, four premises. It's a way of taking four different, interesting, integrative positions on something that used to be seen one way only. And of course, when something is seen one way only and experienced one way only, and there is no conception of any other way, that is when we get had 
completely buy it. That's when the hypnotic loop creates the reality tunnel and creates one way of seeing and one way of doing and one way of responding. If we want to help bust somebody out, while having a blowing out, to borrow a phrase I heard from Tad James originally, blowing out the boundary conditions is what we want to do, and the tetralemma is powerful for doing this. So let me explain what the tetralemma is. In a sense, you can look at it on paper, and if you go and look on Wikipedia and see what tetralemma is, it'll give you a very dry description. It will uh, say it's a figure in ancient Indian logic, and it will give you some logic symbols, okay? And, and you might look at that and think, well, that seems like a very dry, uh, intellectual, left-brain thing. But actually, unlike much of the, the classical Western logic, which is dry, linear, either or, all of these kinds of things. The tetralemma has the capacity to leverage us out of that way of thinking and into a much more right brain, uh, multi-channel, integrative way of processing, which is much more in alignment with the kind of embodied shifts we need to make if we really want to change our experience in life. So let me explain the four positions uh, on the tetralemma. We have... Um, Normally when I explain this, I map this out on the floor for people, or at least map this out on a whiteboard, but the nature of this video is going to make this slightly challenging to do. We have four positions. Let me kind of draw them up in space, and you can use your ability to imagine deeply what I might be drawing to keep track of this diagram. So first and foremost, we have this, uh, this central position. Okay, let's imagine we have a central position. And then to the one side of this central position, we have a truth Okay, a truth, quote-unquote, truth, uh, which is going to be something we believe firmly and deeply, something that we believe. And of course, truths, understandings, these are the things that underpin our hypnotically generated and sustained realities that we experience the world through. So we have a truth. On the other side, we have the opposite of that truth, an opposite of that truth, or just a simple negation of the first truth. Okay, so we have truth and we have the opposite of the truth. And... What we do if we're working with this hypnotically is we facilitate people through the capacity to be fully immersed and fully embedded, first in the truth that they know, but then in the opposite of that truth. Okay, and there's some facilitation skills in this. If somebody's been wedded to one particular truth, it's very easy for them to access that. But to access the opposite is often a challenge. So um, part of what we do when we're working with this hypnotically is we help people to access that and fully immerse themselves in that opposite truth. Now, we're not denying the first truth. We are accessing one and then the other. Okay, so imagine these as two sides uh, to the central starting position. Then what we have is a front position where we take somebody into an expanded sense of self where they can experience both the original truth and the opposite of that truth fully and vividly and completely at the same time. And this is a really, really powerful thing. A really powerful thing because in a sense uh, I, I think Stephen Walensky has put it like this. All trances, all reality tunnels, if you like, are identities. In the sense that when somebody drops into a truth, that truth becomes all-encompassing. It becomes the truth, absolutely and completely. And our identity collapses around that truth. Okay, If somebody says, I am weak, for example, when they are accessing that and they're in that reality tunnel... So far as they're concerned in terms of their experience and their identity, that's what they are. They're collapsed around that. Okay, I am weak. And what they've lost touch of is everything else they are beyond that hypnotic trance, that hypnotic loop. So when they're in the front position and they're holding two opposite truths within an expanded sense of self, well, obviously... This is a very transformative position to be in because they have to get implicitly that they transcend both of those truths and implicitly, implicitly that they are the creator and experiencer of those truths. Okay, so this is a very powerful thing. This is a hypnotic facilitation, remember, uh, or a psychoactive facilitation, if you prefer. So we've got the three positions. We've got the truth, We've got uh, the opposite of the truth, and then we've got the truth and the opposite of the truth in the front position held at the same time. 
Now in the back position, what we have, so that's stepped back from the central position, in the back position what we have is we have the negation of both the truth and the opposite truth. Okay? The negation of. So we have the person stand and experience fully that that is not true and neither is the opposite. So we have, we have truth and opposite truth. We have both and at the same time and neither or at the same time. And we take people through these four positions and we facilitate that experience in an embodied way deeply. Now what this does is it completely scrambles the picture. It completely blows out the boundary conditions that have been deeply held. There is, um, there is a, an old piece of wisdom, I understand it's in the Yoga Sutras by Patanjali, Patanjali or Patanjali. I've, I've looked for this myself. Um, I've not read the Yoga Sutras completely. They're not especially dense text, but um, I've had a, a, a difficulty keeping my interest in there. So I'm quoting John Overdurf in saying this, but according to John Overdurf, uh, Patanjali or Patanjali says in the Yoga Sutras, the surest path to enlightenment lies in the capacity to hold two contradictory ideas in consciousness long enough for a higher order of thinking to emerge. Okay. Now, if you try with your left brain to come up with a new solution for something, you're always trapped in the, the conditions from which you are thinking from. Okay, but if you can bring in another truth and hold it in the right brain space and hold those two truths together deeply and transcend those truths yourself, your inner mind, if you like, has the capacity to do what it does best and work generatively to create this new understanding that goes beyond words. You know, later on you might be able to formulate it into a, a word form, but initially it goes beyond words, takes you beyond words, takes you or takes the client that you're working with beyond the conceptualizations that have been keeping them locked down in the old pattern. So, the way I use the tetralemma, there's two ways I use this. Number one is in a formal process, which is mapped out and uses spatial anchoring. Okay, so it's a floor space mapped out spatial anchoring process, if you like. It is a hypnotic, it is a psychoactive facilitation, 100%. That's one way that I will use tetralemma. Very useful, very powerful way of using it. However, it is not the way that I use it most. It is the way that I recommend people learn to use it initially, but it is not the way that I use it most. The way that I use it most is as an understanding that underpins conversational hypnosis work. When you have the tetralemma map, you know what it is that you're doing with the tetralemma. You can use it to uh, powerfully drive very, um, very meaningful, precise, directed conversational change work, if you like. And, and you can actually do it quite quickly. For me, this is a, another one of what I would call a back pocket tool. It's something that I roll out quite regularly. If I'm working with a client, I have my whiteboard over here to the right. Often I'll be working with a client and their beliefs... Their understandings, of course, they leak out with every word they say. I'm jotting up key operational concepts. And then with the client, I'll hone in on one of them. And I'll do a very conversationally based uh, tetralemma, if you like. And just sit there and gently watch them smoking out. Okay, Starting to loosen all those boundary conditions and become free to experience things in different ways. And you can do it quite rapidly. So there's a, an introduction to the tetralemma, how it works as a tool for blowing out the boundary conditions that hold current reality tunnels, current hypnotic loops, current toxic trances, if you like, in place. And I am going to be running a workshop on how you can do this. If you're a hypnotherapist, if you're a coach, if you're a change work practitioner of some kind, and you would like to learn to use the tetralemma to understand the tetralemma, and um, the workshop won't be about how you can use it in your own life, but you know, once you have the understanding of it, it becomes something you can kind of effortlessly deploy uh, in your own life as well when you want to blow out some of your own toxic trances. So it has that additional benefit as well. But the workshop, um, I'm not going to give the details of the exact date because as I'm recording this video, I haven't decided the exact date. But if you are watching this video, you will be able to find out it will either be on the information page for the Tetralemma workshop 
or it will be on YouTube, in which case there will be a link to the information page of the Tetralemma workshop. You will have the information uh, about the dates, about the locations. And if this is something that you think, right, you know, it, it clicks for you and you get how this works and you want to be on the workshop, well, you know what you need to do. The information is on the information page. If you have any questions as well, please do make use of the comments section either here on YouTube, if that's where you're watching it, or on the information page for the Tetralemma workshop. Take care.